Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Rick House Podcast, your window into the wide world of whiskey. Today, we're here with Bobby from Blind Barrels. Bobby, how are you today? I'm fantastic. How are you? Doing well. Pretty excited. I think this was uh, a little bit overdue. I, you're doing some really cool stuff, and uh, I'm glad that we get an opportunity to talk to you about it today. Um, I, as you pointed out, I have not yet opened my box. I wanted to uh, wait until <laughs> we were on the podcast. So let's go ahead and uh, <laughs> open that up. So tell me a little bit about this. So you were saying that it, it was kind of a journey for you all to get to where you're at today to actually be able to send out this box. Yeah, you know, when quarantine started, my, my buddy who started doing blind tastings and with, with whiskey, and I'd done it with wine before. I'd never done it with whiskey. And <clears throat> I was more of a drinker than a taster. And once he did the first tasting, I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. I just love uh, – I love discovering what I liked um, without any bias on I spent this on a bottle or I've heard of this brand, uh, which I had done with wine before. You know, you buy that bottle of Opus 1 and somebody left it in the car too long and it goes bad. And everyone goes, oh, it's it's amazing. It's a $200 bottle and it's amazing. And it just ends up not being that great. Uh, and so afterwards I called my friend, I'm like, dude, this is a business. This is a thing. And he's like, yeah, I don't know. And I'm like, does it fit the hat fit? Yeah. The hat, the hat fits great. Nice. <laughs> I, you know, I, I have a massive head. Uh, I played college football at USC. And so like, um, I had to get like a custom made version of that hat just so it doesn't look stupid on me. Uh, but basically, uh, you know, once my, my buddy had, um, you know, I talked to him about it. I said, I'm going to figure this out. I mean, either this isn't allowed, either I can't send samples out. Um, it's not, it's not legal or it's complicated. And it turned out to be complicated. Um, so I discovered you could do a free hour long talk with, uh, as you see, that's the box there. That's our, so we wanted the whole experience to be, you know, just top shelf and badass. Yeah, this is um, awesome. I mean, if, if you can see in here, I mean, it, it, the presentation is excellent. I mean, that that is so cool. Oh, thank you. You know, it's uh, <clears throat> I think you know I I have been in all the clubs and I've gotten the corrugated box samples before, where I've just been like, oh, I don't feel as special now that you just threw a bunch of stuff in a corrugated box and sent it to me. Um, so for me, getting the packaging, um, and just you know, and I think you you could probably take out the foam inserts at some point. And you could reutilize the box for some point. Uh, but it's got that soft touch. It's got the gold leaf. It's it's color litho. Um, there's a magnet lift on there. Um, yeah. Those are custom inserts. Um, those are custom bottles. I'll tell you what, making custom bottles sucks. Yeah, I've heard um, it's insane. I've heard it is way more complicated than people think it is. I should have. I should have. Well, in the grand scheme, it worked out. We went through eight molds to just find a 50 milliliter that could fit tamper evident caps um, because it doesn't exist in the glass world. Because um, originally what we were going to do was send our bottles to distilleries, have them fill it, um, oh, and then pass through. And so that would have been a way to do it. Um, and then they would have to license the label. They would have to file certificate of label acceptance, which is a, which is called COLA in the uh, Trade Tobacco Bureau world or the yeah. TTP. And uh, We've had to do that so for some of our private picks. picks. That what? We've had to do that for some of our private barrel picks, like go go file those label things, and it's you got to wait for them to approve it, and we don't like the way that this looks, and it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's funny, you know, my backdrop is a is as a filmmaker, and uh, you know, whenever I delve into different documentary issues, I always feel like I have to get my master's degree in whatever that topic is, and I feel like going through this world of whiskey, I've 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 gotten not my master's degree, but close in terms of like liquor laws. I think that the joke in the industry is prohibition never really ended uh, because it's just it has to pass from a producer, which is a distillery to a distributor. And there's not a lot of them and they kind of have a stranglehold. And then to a retailer, which is what we are, we're a licensed entity to make a point of sale. And yeah. so these guys that these small brands that not everybody in craft is doing amazing stuff. But the ones that are, they can't get the shelf space because of that stranglehold that distributors have. Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting that you say that because when we do the Rick House episodes, um, you know, we go around and we go all over the place. We've done, a, you know, we've done seasons in Kentucky, Tennessee, Colorado, Texas. And it's interesting to see how a lot of these big distilleries, they, you know, they're just like, yeah, we just pretty much just walk into somewhere and we're like, hey, we're, you know, we're going to sell this here. And liquor stores are like, okay, sounds good. And, uh, 
you'll have a lot of these craft distilleries and they're like, yeah, we've been trying to, uh, we've been trying to get into this like same liquor store for three months and they, they won't bring us in. The product is, is good, but they won't bring us in and you'll taste it. And you're, you're like, this is better than some of the other stuff on that shelf at that price point. And they just don't, they won't give them the time of day. They won't let them. A hundred percent. You know, there's these, there's, there's small town farmers, distillers that are out there that are rock stars within 50 miles. And as you get further and further outside of that radius, they people have not heard of them. In our first lineup, so the lineup that you have right now is a one-off lineup that we just did for for press and some influencers and things like that. So that, you know, if you want to reveal anything in this process, you're not ruining the March box that goes yeah. out uh, in the middle of next month. Uh, but in our first lineup in March, there's, I'll tell you, there's, we found a diamond in the rough, literally, like in the middle of nowhere, making one of the best bourbons. Um, that we, we we put it to a blind tasting. Part of our process isn't, um, oh, well, we know we like this brand. Let's put them in the lineup or let's talk to them and see if we can make that happen. Yeah. We blind taste everything with our group to even decide if they're going to be able to make the cut to be in our lineup. So we even remove preconceived biases and notions just before we even make the blind tasting. We blind taste ourselves. Dang. Yeah. So, I mean, so you all are, are going in as whiskey enthusiasts, which I assume you wouldn't go down this rabbit hole if you weren't but as as a whiskey lover as a whiskey enthusiast you are going out you're finding craft distilleries things that might have gone under the radar things that you know distilleries that might not be in the limelight and you're bringing quality product that you feel meets your expectations your rubric you know your seal of approval and sharing it with other whiskey enthusiasts who might not otherwise get an opportunity to try these craft distilleries exactly you know i mean i think people are like oh well so what are you gonna have like makers mark and makers in there i'm like we'll never have them in our lineup and not because we don't um like you know the whiskey that they're making or anything like that uh it's really the the curation part of what we're trying to do um you know like i said i'd love to say everybody in the craft industry is making just killer stuff but two-thirds of it is either really strange and almost too weird yeah um, and some of it's not very good because they're still just figuring it out you know we've been seeing we're kind of in the second whiskey boom the last one was in the late 1800s um, where we've got over 2500 distilleries in the country now and some of them are doing some amazing amazing products and uh you know our we don't just have you know the whiskey nerds um i i still consider myself more of a novice um in that you know i've going from me i've gone from being a drinker into a taster um i've got my two guys that are my uh uh christopher uh sebastian and, and christian Riddout, who are my spirits guides they're mm-hmm. hardcore whiskey nerds they want to know the yeast of the thing and yeah. like you know they they have their whatever their four letter initialism from four roses that they prefer you know of within their whatever 12 brands and so they know all the nuances of that i'm constantly learning from them uh, but everybody in our lineup, from our CFO to those guys, everybody weighs in. Because uh, as you know, someone's favorite and least favorite, um, it's completely subjective in what your taste buds are actually telling you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the things is like, so I review a lot of whiskey. I'm sure you've seen. But, you know, I, I review a ton of whiskey. I go to all of these distilleries and I try all, all this different stuff. And it's interesting because, you know, my, my staff that I have, um, you know, my camera crew when I'm out and checking out these distilleries, we'll all have very different opinion and we're all big whiskey people. You know, we've all sampled, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different whiskeys and, and we'll go into somewhere and there'll be, we get to try a lot of stuff that like hasn't come out to market yet or might not ever come out to market. It might be a distillery only release that's still aging. And so, you know, for example, we, you know, we got to try, uh, we went to Garrison brothers. We got to try a, uh, cognac finished uh, Laguna Madre, and it's it's very limited release, but it's going to come out in 2023. We got to tap the barrel and try it, and then we got to tap the barrel and try Cowboy Bourbon right out of the dang barrel. And I was all about that co- Cowboy Bourbon right out of the barrel, like 143 proof, just like <laughs> syrup. And then my camera guy could not, I mean, he just couldn't stop talking for days about that Laguna Mandre finished in the cognac. And it's like, <laughs> and it's crazy. Cause like, I thought that was good, but that cowboy to me was just straight from the barrel was just something completely different for him. The cowboy, he's like, yeah, that's good. But this cognac finished one is just unbelievable. So we have, you know, even people that 
are very, very versed in what they're doing, have such different, uh, you know, have such different tastes and such different opinions. And like, I can review whiskey all day. I can rate whiskey. I can score whiskey all day. But at the end of the day, what I taste and what you taste is going to be different. You may think something is the best thing that you've ever tasted. I may try it and give it a two out of five. Like you just never know. So I love this concept because you get to, you get to try all of this different stuff. So I assume the things in the box that you have, these four different samples are going to be very different samples so that there's a little something for everybody. Is that right? Absolutely. By the way, how was the nose on that uh, cognac finish? Was it a funky nose? On Dude, that? it was so good. It, I gotta, I gotta say it, it was really good, but it, it was, they aged it in a wet cognac barrel so they didn't dry it out first. So it, it maintained a little bit of that cognac in there. Cool. And uh, it was, it was good. It had a little bit of a funky nose to it, but it, it just carried a lot of fruit to it as well. There was that, that little musty note that you get when you get those, those big cognac casks brought in, but but I mean, the amount of fruit that transferred from the wet barrel into that whiskey after aging for a little over a year was, I mean, it, that fruit note just poof, carried right through. That, that, that's that's awesome because we have we have in, in a future lineup later this year we have one that's finished in a cognac barrel that I think is one of the best and it, and it's an actually a really expensive bottle. We're lucky to have them in one of our lineups. And um, when we did this tasting with all these people. A couple of the guys were like, oh, this is terrible. This this <laughs> smells like the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, like this musky, dank smell. That's and I was so like, funny. I like the funkiness. I like th- that it was different. Um, and, it, and it ended up being really good. And and, and because it, it, we don't want everything to be crazy funky, to kind of answer your previous question, we want diversity in the mash, the makeup, the location um, of the distillery, ideally, um, the backstory. Um, we're trying to make this a full experience. So... Uh, some people are like, so is, are these going to be all bourbons? And I'm like, well, we don't want to just go brown sugar caramel all day, right? Yeah. Um, or just have pure sweet. It's almost like, do you want to do eight samples of extra añejo? No, you'll kill yourself by the third sample, <laughs> right? Um, and I'm not saying that there aren't diversity within bourbons themselves. Um, but yeah, there's some there's some great wheat. Obviously, there's some great barley. There's some great foregrain out there. The I think American malt, I mean... I'll tell you, there's some American malt and there's some ones that are coming up in our lineup that are just mind blowing. Um, And I think there's this conception that everything, you know, people like, well, I don't like scotch. And I'm like, okay, well, not everything's peated, not everything's smoky. I mean, there's some things that there's there's some samples that even our whiskey nerds are going like, oh, this is a rye. And it's like, no, it's a malt or, oh, this is a bourbon. It's like, no, it's a rye. And so sometimes like it's it's so unique and interesting in and of itself that it's even hard to. You, you, usually people can take really good guesses on it um, or someone will get a note out of it. Um, but everybody's, it, you know, what I learned recently was when someone says, oh, I'm getting cherry and another person says I'm getting almond, they're actually both related to the same chemical. It's just they have a different memory associated with that particular hmm. chemical. Um, so your brain, so when someone says cherry and another says almond, that doesn't mean that they're wrong um, necessarily. You know, that just happens to be what their brain is perceiving that particular flavor and that sensation and that aroma, whatever they're getting on that. Interesting. Actually. See, I, I, I never thought about that. I never thought about how a chemical, just the perception of the exact same thing would be different based on taste memory, essentially. I, I usually will link, um, when I'm tasting something, I'll be like, oh, this reminds me of my second kiss in the middle of that Mel Gibson movie. And it's like, oh yeah, because she had a lot of bubble gum. And there was like a, there's an association with that memory or, oh, I, it's like when I walk into an ice cream shop and my buddy would be like, that's waffle cone. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> like, so I have a hard time. You know, if you look on the the, the, the back of the table that you have, uh, the insert, um, one of the things that we wanted to do was kind of reinvent the wheel, literally. Um, oh, that's the whiskey really wheel cool. has always been annoying to us um because you're constantly turning and you're looking at it and i always thought it should be a table um and i didn't want the wheel we didn't want to make a round box there was all this stuff that went into it i'm like let's just make a table and then once we made the table i'm like oh i love the table so much more than the wheel now um yeah so we kind of wanted to reinvent the wheel literally in that by making that table well, awesome. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the, you know, we were talking about it a little earlier and we haven't really touched on it. It was a process to be able to send these out. It was a, it was a hundred percent of pro. Well, after I called my friend, I'm like, this is the thing. And he's like, uh, I, I discovered that I could do a free hour long consultation with an ABC attorney, alcohol beverage control attorney. 
um, and get a free hour long consultation. And I did 17 of those. Um, so the first six that Jeez. I talked to were like, yeah, the first six that I talked to, they're like, I'm like, oh, I want to get samples. I'm going to pour them into bottles. I'm going to send them out to people. They're like, you, you, there's like eight things wrong with like what you just said there. You literally can't do that. And I was like, okay. You're like, okay, so then watch I, me. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. I'm like, let's see them stop me. And then I called another one and they said, well, you know what you could do? You could do this and, and you could maybe do that. And I would take, but you can't do this. So then I took that into the next meeting. I said, okay, here's what I want to do. And I would start with the two things that I could do. And then I'd inch it forward. And I gleamed information from all these different attorneys because um, I didn't I didn't raise the money yet to uh, hire an, <laughs> an attorney yet. And so once I figured out how to do it and how we originally were going to do it um, isn't the way that we're currently doing it. We found an easier way to do it. But um, companies like Flaviar, you know, they're, they're doing mass samples. So I know that they're doing something similar in, in what their process is, but I couldn't just call Flavia and be like, Hey, how are you doing this? I had to like yeah. kind of figure it out. You know, I could, I was like looking in their hey, terms of service. We're thinking about scouring. opening up a competitive program, com- competitive program. How, uh, how are you guys doing your stuff? <laughs> yeah, exa- well, you know, and that was the thing It's like, I had been in Flavia and um, I, I think, what I like about Flaviar is when they open up the vault and they, for a couple hours, you can go and buy something that's unattainable and I can never afford it, but I like looking at it. But yeah, to me, the disconnect. I've seen some have, of those vault things and they're like, they're well above secondary. It's like, Hey, do you want a bottle of old rep 10 for like $1,200? No, I don't. I don't want that. Yeah, level. no, a hundred percent. I like looking at it. Um, I, I've never bought anything from it. I appreciate the experience of it. Um, or the fact that, oh, if I had the money that I could do it. Um, so I appreciate that. I think the disconnect that I had with Flaviar was there's, first of all, I'm picking the samples. So if you're in their club long enough, you're looking at the same samples that you're picking. Yeah. Um, if you're, if, especially if you're picking a lane like whiskey or tequila, uh, which are kind of the two lanes that I usually like to pick. Um, and now I'm getting, you know, I was getting into rum because I'm like, okay, um, I was running out of sample picks. Um, but then you get those three samples and then they lock you into a bottle that isn't one of those samples. And I always thought that was a disconnect because this bottle that I'm getting, all of a sudden, I usually a lot of times maybe don't like it. Um, and then I'm like, <laughs> oh, and then now I'm trying to give it away. Um, and there's other companies out there that we we have respect for. And I do have respect for Flaviar and our competitors um, that are doing things differently. Um, we literally wanted to create this, not just to be the first real blind tasting, but really to highlight craft. Um, and to, to go through, um, you know, we, I think we tried about 120 samples to figure out the first 16 that are in our first year's lineup. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, from, we've talked to probably about, uh, 60 different distilleries at this point. And so, um, you, we've, we've kissed a lot of frogs, let's just put it that way, <laughs> uh, in order to figure it out and then trying to be, make sure that the experience is interesting enough. I don't expect everyone to go in this and just fall in love with every sample yeah. at all. Um, you know, I, I had a buddy who had a, a, a candy subscription and it was expensive. It was like, it was kind of pricey and you get 10 pieces of candy from around the world. And, I think I've heard you know, of that. J- Japan would have this weird tentacle thing, you know, like, cause they like tentacle, uh, you know, all these countries have this different stuff. But then I got this one from the Sudan and I'm like, does it have to be spicy and chalky? And I hated it, but I love that I got to try it. Yeah. Um, and, and so it's not that we're going to throw a bunch of weird stuff in a box. And we do think people will um, like most of the samples and love some of them. Um, but yeah, some people just, you, you're never going to convince them that a rye um, is good enough. But so you, I think a lot of people will discover after they try it yeah. that they like a rye and not realize that they like a rye. So you said tequila and rum. Are Is everything that comes in this box, is it just a whiskey or does it also kind of go into different categories as well? So so we're only doing whiskey. And that was – so originally the, the original idea was every other month uh, people would get whiskey. And uh, it was so it was going to be bi monthly, and and we were going to do tequila as a separate club in the off of the other off months. Got and it, then I right. realized that was that first of all we was going to split our marketing spend, which would be a bad thing in yeah. a lot of ways. But also getting distilleries and the process of what we had to do to create these samples is painstaking. And so we switched to quarterly, and we we're sticking with just whiskey for at least the next eighteen months. 
Our goal by the end of 2023 or the start of 2024 is to eventually get into tequila because tequila is just so exciting. Um, whether it's the the Cristalinos or you know all the different categories or even sodas and things that are oh, in the we, agave world. We went to um, Desert Door down in Texas. They're one of our upcoming uh, episodes, and they're they're doing soda all over there. We actually picked a uh, a barrel aged soda that uh, is going to benefit Wild Things Wild Places, a charity over there that's all about you know conserving the texas environment so oh, we're cool. we're pretty excited i'll have to send you a sample of that once once they uh come out but it's it's pretty sick that's awesome i would love to try a sample of that because yeah i think i think that whole i mean look tequila is is now experiencing what whiskey has been experiencing in the last 10 years and so you're getting in all this exciting stuff um so your point is that sample a that is sample a yeah we do have a bit of a rhyme and reason for the order that we do these things um and somebody I was just talking to, uh, they started with sample D and I went, Oh, you started with sample D. That was very adventurous of you. Um, and I can see you're doing the, um, the clock, right? You're doing yeah. the different clock, um, the smell. And so that's an advanced, uh, taster there people. Not that I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> it's almost like I do it for a living. One of the things that we have on our site actually is a master class on tasting. Um, whether it's aroma um, tasting notes, finish, color, appearance, um, as well as mash bill, understanding what the recipe is, uh, whiskey nomenclature and whiskey history. And that's free for anybody. So if anybody wants to go to blindbarrels.com and just take a free master class, um, and that's just us supporting the whiskey culture and the whiskey community in general. Hey, you said whiskey uh, culture. Whiskey culture. Boom. <laughs> On purpose. Exactly. I get a quarter every time you say that. No, I'm just kidding. I know. <laughs> I mean, it is amazing that you have that that uh, that dot com. I don't know how far back you had to go to get that, but uh, 2017, uh, I picked it up. I was surprised it wasn't taken, but it, it kind of married my love of of history and research and whiskey and community. And it was literally the first name that I tried. I was like, I love culture and I love whiskey, whiskey culture. And it was it was available. We got it, and it's actually officially trademarked. So, boom. <laughs> Congrats! Yeah, yeah, the trademarking process is not fun either. Is no, it? <laughs> no, especially with with how long everything has been. We we didn't want to announce that it was trademarked till like it was set in stone, but now it is, so that's pretty cool. But this first sample is so interesting. Yeah, you know, my guess. If I'm I'm gonna guess that of the four samples in here, um, that you're gonna have heard of. You're probably going to have heard of of of, the, of three of them, is what my guess is. I think the average person, uh, most most people that aren't like big big whiskey people, um, will have never heard of any of these. Uh, it reminds me, but of, yeah, this is it reminds me of Black Button a bit, like a like Northern New York, like bourbon, but it's got a bit of like a like a, a bit can of I like cuss a, on this. <laughs> I as as long as it's not. You can do the light, the light curse words, not the, not the serious ones. Cause then you, no, I was just, uh, I, I was, I was about to <laughs> say an expletive because you have a really amazing palette to, um, that, that is black button. No way. There's no yeah, way. Dude, dude, I mean, I, I, <laughs> I'm like, do I tell them that it is? I'm like, I kind of have to, cause <laughs> that's amazing, dude. That is amazing. You're probably the first person you pull that out you're like this you're like oh i'm getting rochester i'm getting this is very rochester lime water i don't know i don't know how you did that i do not have the ability to do what you just did there but that is <laughs> black button well i'm, I'm um, i think I, I cheated a little bit because about two months ago i picked a barrel of black button so i i, I kind of still have the taste a little fresh but like it is so funny that that I, I cannot believe that won't ever be repeated by me again. <laughs> That's amazing. I don't think that'll ever happen again. That is black buttons. That's their four grain. Um, and, and I'll tell you, I mean, we are huge fans. There's going to be something of theirs in our lineup in the future. Um, because we're, we're just fans of everything they're doing there. We, we were actually in Louisville for the American craft spirits association to just meet, uh, more craft distillers. And the first night we went to dinner, I think we went to repeal 
Um, and just had a, an amazing dinner there. And I just saw the shirt and they were on our short list. And I'm like, oh, there's Jeff. I'm like, and I, I literally our first night in Louisville, we ran into them, um, the, the head distiller and the owner and um, Jason and Jeff. And, you know, <laughs> we were fans of theirs from the get go. And um, we have some samples in house that we're working. I have to work these things into, I have to, so I'm, I have to create these blind samples for, Oh, my my spirits guides, as I call them, and my group, so that they're blind tasting everything, and that's always sometimes hard for me is to like. Um, I sometimes know that there's a brand that they like, so I have to kind of sneak it into a big enough lineup to where they can't do what you just did. Because sometimes they'll be like, "Oh, I think this is this," and I'm like, "Damn it, they'll get it." <laughs> uh, but that's amazing, dude! You pulled that right <laughs> off the bat. That's, Look at don't, you. Don't expect that again. <laughs> that was amazing. Are you on sample B right now? I am. So this sample this, B was. I, I like. I get a bit of like a, a t really toasty earth note, almost like a. There's a bit of that barrel char in there, and that that deep caramel, not really toffee, but almost like a like a charred spiced oak, and then a little bit of mm. like smoked black currant tea, but. I don't know. This this has like more of a like a rye or like a high rye note to it. I could be completely wrong, but that that's what I get on that like earthy spice note. I, it always makes me think of a rye. Tell me I'm wrong. I'm pulling this bottle right now. Yeah, one of the things with that. Um... Oh, oh my! This is there's a finish on this. Yes, there is. There absolutely is. This is this is one of my favorites. Um, you know, I've known about them for a little while. It's really hard for me to get these bottles. Um, <laughs> and, and now that I have a license, I can get these things and I can <laughs> buy it for myself wholesale. And it's amazing. Um, but this was one of those bottles that back in the day, I had heard kind of the legend of, of this craft distillery. And I had a really, really difficult time getting these bottles. Um, and that's one, again, one of the, one of the cool things about this um, subscription model is if somebody likes a bottle, we're going to be able to send it to them and we're not yeah. going to, we're not going to raise the retail price. Um, we're really not going to make money from bottle sales and is what's going to happen. Um, we have a fulfillment partner that will make more mainly because we're giving shipping discounts mm -hmm. to our members. Um, and we're not compensating for that by then raising the retail, which is what you'll see a lot of um, people in our model do. Uh, but I don't want people to misassociate the brand. But yeah, what do you think of that one? I think it's good. It reminds me a bit of something that I tried over at, and this is not, I'm not going to get this two in a row. It's not going to be two and two. I mean, I'll tell you, I'll run out of the room and start. <laughs> I think we're in the matrix or something. But it, it reminds me of something I tried over in uh, Texas. It was the last place that we went. It was a place called Rebecca Creek. And mm -hmm. uh, it reminds me, there. it's not, and the reason I know that it's not the same distillery is because it's not available for sale yet. It's kind of they're they're hanging out and still aging, but we tried a little bit of a. Uh, it, it, they were finishing it in. Um, they're finishing it like an, a light cherry finish, but it was like a high rye uh, whiskey, like a high rye bourbon, finishing in a sherry cask, and it kind of reminds me a little bit of that. Okay. And, and I mean, and how do you want to do it? So generally how um, we do it usually, and I, I know this may be a shorter format, um, is people go through the tastings and then we kind of reveal the second time through. But I think because you kind of already nailed the first one that we can reveal um, what this is. And this is what Kings we... County straight bourbon. Oh, dang. I, you know what? When I'm in, in – uh, I have not tried them yet, but I know about them. When I see them in Tennessee, when I swing by like cork dorks and stuff like that and cool wine spirits – They've got a lot of that Kings County stuff uh, hanging out in some of those bigger Tennessee whiskey stores, and we see it all mm -hmm. the time. It's it's not inexpensive, uh, but it's just one of those ones I keep picking up, and I'm like, dang, I kind of want to try this. But you picked up though on the on the on the long finish, and yeah. and also um, some of those those spices that you're talking about. Um, but their uh, it's their mash bill is eighty percent corn. Um, and, uh, 20% English golden promise malt. Really? Um, and so, uh, when, when, once someone goes through the lineup, that QR code that's, you know, on the back, oh, that's, I see that's that. you know, here. So what happens is your phone will pick up on the QR code 
and it will tell you um, the ABV, the location, the name, obviously the name of the whiskey, the mash bill, um, the aroma, the finish, um, the backstory of the distillery, kind of our take on the distillery and what we like about it. Um, well, that's cool. And so you get to kind of learn everything you want to know about it. And also the we will have a kind of a tasting experience that walks people through it. Like right now for the box that you have, there's just kind of a promotional video. But when someone gets their boxes mid-March, there's going to be a video that actually walks them through the lineup. So if they really want to, you know, go a little bit further down the uh, educational rabbit hole, which somebody like you probably wouldn't need to do that. But I think for, for people that are just kind of in that initial stages of discovering whiskey, or, or at least want to even hear what other people um, are saying and guiding their yeah. experience a little bit more. Well, man, I'm forever a student though. That That's one of those things like I, I'm getting ready to take, you know, I, I need to familiarize myself more with scotch. So I'm getting ready to take a scotch certification. And I did my WSET too. And you know, my, the, uh, bourbon steward course, like, I, I feel like I've always been that kind of person, someone that's just a student of, of life in general and everything that I get into, like, if you're going to make a career out of it or, or really try, you know, even before I, I sold my financial planning practice to do whiskey culture full time, I was just constantly getting new certifications and new stuff and just constantly trying to learn. I feel like the second we stop learning and the second we think we know it all is the, the second we start dying a little bit every day. And so like, I'm, I'm always, I <laughs> I'll go and sit at like one Oh tasting one Oh ones and just sit back and see how somebody presents or see if they, you know, any notes that they have that may not be something that I use that they're using. And there's just always something to learn. It does not matter. You know, you could be the number one whiskey critic in the world, all the way down to somebody who just started collecting whiskey today. If you, you know, you, there's always something that you can learn from every person that you meet. And it's, you know, so I, I, I love the idea that you're doing that because it's it's going to be good for veteran people as well. You know, veteran whiskey enthusiasts because it's, it's a great point because and, and it's almost like, um, you know, uh, our our spirits guys, when they're going through it, they really listen to uh, my CFO who really doesn't drink a lot of whiskey. Uh, they really do listen to everybody and hear what everyone's thinking about it. Um, and, and someone will always say something like, oh, this this smells like like you opened up a new can of tennis balls and people are like you know what? I am getting that. And it's almost like there's this gas, someone's getting gasoline and someone's getting this, you know, ethyl smell and that someone's like tennis balls. It does taste like tennis and they'll pull something out of it. Somebody will always come up with something interesting along the way. And I agree. I'm totally, I'm a novice. I actually called up the whiskey guys. I'm like, are you guys maybe available for this podcast? He might ask me about the intricacies of like non-chill filter. And I no. might have to like look no. up my notes. And <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. No, we don't get that into depth. We, we like to keep it light here. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you know, I'm telling you, you know, you you get with some of these guys that have been down the rabbit hole for a long time, and I'm not even in their hemisphere um, or, or or playing at all. And I'm just sitting there, and I'm like learning. I'm still in that learning phase. I, I feel like there's a level, like if if so, like a podcast like this, we've probably got veteran whiskey enthusiasts listening to this, people that have been you know, heavy into whiskey for years and years and years, and they know everything, you know, not everything, but they know a lot. Then there are other people that are probably just getting into whiskey, you know, becoming a whiskey enthusiast. They're looking for new content. They're looking for new podcasts. If that's you, welcome. But, uh, you know, one of the big things is, is that um, at a point, like depending on who you're talking to, like if you're sitting with a bunch of, of new whiskey drinker. So this last weekend, I was the closing uh, speaker at uh, the Beer Bourbon Barbecue Fest in Tampa. And I did a tasting on a bourbon and a rye. And I, I was teaching people how to, you know, how do you taste the whiskey? How, you know, how do you nose the whiskey? How do you pick apart the body from the finish? And a lot of these, you know, these people, I, I would be like, I, you know, I, I'm getting uh, like baked caramel. I'm getting, you know, vanilla spice. I'm getting toasted, like dry roasted oak, almost like, or like I'm getting a bit of a campfire here. And I, you try to keep it as broad and as relatable as you can. And you'll get these guys that'll, that'll really go down the rabbit hole. And it's like the, the, their general audience has no idea what they're talking about. If they're like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you know, fl you know, I'm getting baked Mars Capan and like, flash fried toasted, you know, flash fried pine nuts in a garlic oil. And you're like, you're, it's like your average consumer just has no, 
idea what the hell you're talking about, honestly. Like, Dude, marzipan comes up all the time, and I'm like, what's marzipan? Yeah. <laughs> I Dude, like, I literally I went out candy and – marzipan, and I, I'm like, I always – every time I have to look up, I'm like, what the hell is – I'm getting, I'm getting pit fruit, and I'm yeah. like, okay, I got I to gotta like look up you know, <laughs> some of the things that you – know, Yeah, it's stringent. And I feel and like I'm it's like, know your audience. Like don't – like if, if you're diving down into these things that are hyper unrelatable for people, like – People might be like, oh, wow, that guy really knows what he's talking about. But like, I don't really get much from his reviews because or, or her reviews because they're just not. They're not accessible. They're not, they're not accessible. Yeah. Like, I don't know what the heck they're talking about. I don't know what any of these flavors are, any of these scents are. So like when I'm when I'm tasting and I'm doing my reviews, I try to stay with stuff like like it tastes like red licorice, like a Twizzler or something, you know, like things that people have tried. Like, oh, it tastes, you know, you get a bit of almond joy or you get a, you know. Something like a, like a chocolate wafer or, like you said, you know, a waffle cone, things like that. Things that people have, like the average person has tried, you know, so that they know what we're talking about. And, and you can always get more specific. Like you can, you can always get more specific, but at a point you lose people. And, and I like to keep my reviews and I like to keep my taste and, and even just talking on a podcast like this. I like to keep it, you know, somewhere where it's just light, like. A veteran whiskey enthusiast could be like, oh, yeah, you know, I get that too. And then a brand new whiskey enthusiast can be like, okay, I understand what he's talking about, what flavors he's describing. Yeah, you're hitting both worlds. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the guy that's like, oh, this reminded me of getting a second base at Skateland in the <laughs> eighth grade. And somebody like, that place smelled like licorice. I'm like, red vines, that's it. And then it'll be like, it'll go back, you know, to something else. But I always think of the memory first for some reason. That's just how my senses work. Yeah, like if you if you're like this tastes like, you know, this tastes like semi sweet chocolate. It's even the diction that you use. Like if you say like, hey, this tastes like semi sweet uh, chocolate and you know uh, baked malt, and, you know whatever people are going to be like whatever. But if you're like, oh, this tastes like the the Whoppers candy, people are like, oh, okay, yes. I get that. I know I've had a Whopper. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, there's a way that you can pull these uber specific flavors, you know, and, and put them into an accessible shell. So like, I just try to be very cognizant of that. Anyways, I'm on C now. So. All right. Oh, that's. Yeah. I mean, the, this, this brand in general is um, I'll tell you, we, we connected with them early on and they sent us samples. This wasn't in one of the samples that they sent us, by the way. <clears throat> and they are just making amazing everything we tried when we were testing it out in our group just ended up being in the top five out of multiple samples every time. And, um, and we kind of heard the legend of this one and we had to try it ourselves. So we then got it. And then we're like, well, it's not in one of our future lineups, but maybe we can make it for this one off lineup. Um, yeah. What are you thinking about that one? It's really good. I mean, again, it's got, it's got a nice earthy flavor to it. Like that second one. I can't tell. I don't think it's finished, but it's got a really sweet character to it. Like it's got a really nice amount of vanilla. It's got a very light caramel, almost like a, like a, like a Werther's caramel candy to it. Um, but it's, it's also got a bit of, of earth and it's weird. Cause on the finish, right at the very end, you get a fruit note, almost like a, like dried berries. And I, and that's, <laughs> It's it's You're good, interesting. Man. You're good. I see. I feel like I'll never be able to train my palate to be at your level. Like I'm, I'm looking at you just keep like, drinking whiskey. It's, it's, of, it's you're, like you're literally hitting like seventy five percent of the notes um, that come directly from the company. So what do we have? What is it? So this is Middle West. They're out of Columbus, Ohio, and this is the 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 double cast collection, the Olorosa wheat finish. There you uh, go. That, that's that earthy spiceness to it. Uh, There's there the go. earthy spice note, uh, but they finish it in a uh, in uh, sherry casks. There you go. There's the fruit uh, note. <laughs> but they re barrel it, do it, and that's the and literally, I mean, if you if you look at the, their finishes, woody with peppery gingerbread and dense fruit notes. Um, you got the you got the chocolatey part that was in um, the, the tasty notes, and um, really, well, it's good amazing. to know I'm not botching this. <laughs> No, no. I mean, and I mean, I got to tell you, we're, if you're ever in Columbus, you should go visit Middle West and try everything that they're making because uh, they're just making some amazing whiskey. Um, 
and we're, we're fans of that too. That's my problem is every time I get one of these, I'm like, oh, I got to buy like two bottles for myself. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm Listen, never going to turn a profit. So it's funny. Uh, <laughs> like I, I've gotten to the point where like doing this for a living, I, I kind of only drink if I'm doing like a review, an event, I'm at a distillery, I've got some friends over, like I'm, I'm not really picking up whiskey like on my own unless I'm, I'm doing it for some sort of work exercise of, of some sort. I still, I mean, I love whiskey. I love drinking it, but it's just one of those things like you do it all day, every day. So like every now and again, I'll like pour myself a rum or I'll have some sake or something, you know? <laughs> and, uh, but it's one of those things like there's just so many people that are, that are doing this. I've got, it's over 270 open bottles here in this room. And, uh, it's funny, man. Like you're talking about training palate. I don't, you, you don't, it's not necessarily training. It's drinking with other people as weird as that sounds. Cause it's like, if you're going to whiskey events and you're drinking with other whiskey enthusiasts, there's certain notes that you're like, ah, damn it. What is that note? And they'll be like, Oh yeah, it, I taste this. And you're like, Oh, that's it. And it's just locked in. Like, you hear that note like two times when you couldn't figure it out and your brain just like locks it into the note category. So it's just going to events and being like, what are you tasting? What are you tasting? What do you smell? What are you tasting? And, and, and running it by what you're getting. And then you just, so it just every now and again, a note will just be like, like, you know what dried berry tastes like at that point, like dried, like red berries, or, you know what, you know, like vanilla spice tastes like it's just, drinking with other people and like asking them what they're smelling, tasting, feeling, texture, all that. I agree. Sometimes I'll hear it and I'll be like, oh, that's what it is. But then sometimes I'm like, does everyone have dried fruit around their house? Because I don't have a lot of dried <laughs> fruit at my house. I'm like, where are people getting all this dried fruit? You know? You know, and we'll it's, get some. it's funny because I don't, I don't think I've ever really eaten dried fruit specifically. No, that's not true. I've had dehydrated fruit. Like, like that's a dehydrated fruit. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I guess it's kind of like what a that. raisin is technically. Yeah, yeah. That's true. well, sun dried. I, mean, I guess red, technically, a, you know, yeah. it's just a grape that's been dehydrated. But that, but that's I don't know. yeah. But that's the thing is like you know I'll I'm drinking with other people and stuff like that. I guess I have had dehydrated fruit now that I think about it. But like, it, there's a lot of those things that you're like, okay, it's this, and then like you had other things that are analogous to it, so. Like you may not have had a dried, a dried fruit, but you may have tried like a dried, like that specific dried fruit, but like we've all had dried strawberries. So like, we know what that type of like dried powdery sweet taste is, but it's like, instead of that strawberry, it's a little bit more on that like red note or that, that blackberry or something like that. So I feel like we just kind of also pull together flavors and we're like, okay, well I get a bit of this. But it also reminds me a bit of this part of this thing that I tried, and now I have this new, this new unit of, of measurement for you know my tasting and, and nosing whiskeys. It's interesting yeah, how it works. Someone will, yeah, sometimes someone will just come up with a note that you've never heard before. Um, you know, somebody the other day was like, "This <laughs> this smells like the inside of my wife's tennis shoe," and I was like. You're smelling the inside of your wife's tennis shoe, <laughs> like, like, what? like yeah, there's, there's they're opening up a whole other can of. But then we kind of broke it down and like, Yikes. no, they're they're new shoes. And then we kind of got to the rubbery part of it. And we're like, oh, okay. And then no, that's this smell. And then they be, like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Why wouldn't you but just start had, with new shoes? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, he has to be like, my wife came home. She was she took a shower, so I got into her shoes. And I'm like, okay, buddy, I don't know. <laughs> All right, and uh, you're off the tasting panel forever. <laughs> I think it's, it's difficult sometimes. So we're doing some barrel picks uh, for some of our lineups. And so, like, mm. here's an example of what, like, you know, a barrel pick looks like is we get these samples, and they're all the same mash bill and expression of, of – what we've picked out that's going to be in our lineup, but we're, we're picking a barrel and it's interesting how different some of the barrels are. Um, I thought, you know, as we started this process, I'm like, Oh, I'm never going to pick up on the subtleties of the differences of different barrels. And then there was one that was drastically different. I mean, you can even just see how light oh, this one is versus that one. D is it's definitely totally D is definitely beer, beer barrel finished. If it's not beer barrel finished, I'm going to lose it. Is it beer barrel finished? Just tell me that. Uh, it's it's not beer barrel finished, but what do you think about that heat level? It's not bad. 
<clears throat> see, this is this is the part where a lot of people um, that that aren't experienced like yourself will be like, "Oh, this is gasoline!" Like, no, "Oh, I, I can't!" Like, I'd peg it at like one, like around one hundred five to one twelve. So this has a pretty. This is a high heat level. Do you want to know? Yeah, yeah. What's the proof? I, I already, I already staked my claim. This is two nine one. Hey, I know them. Barrel proof. Yeah, I mean, I haven't tried their stuff, but I know about them. Killer. They're, you know, some people will pick up on the Aspen State finish because it's kind of has a signature uh, finish to it. Uh, but this is their rye malt mash, and th- it's one hundred thirty one proof. Um, so some people. W- one of the things we don't do this every time, but we we usually like to progress kind of in our lineup. We want the diversity. We don't want to just go bourbon, bourbon. But a lot of times we kind of maybe go up on the proof level. That way we're not yeah. killing people's taste buds. We're warming them up to this. And in our insert, we do tell people like, you know, once again that educational component. Like sometimes you want to proof it down. I mean, this is a great bottle that, I mean, I would drink. I would probably have one exactly as it is. And then the second time through, I would proof it down a little bit, um, either with a small cube or with some drops. Um, you know, some people carry limestone water with them. Um, <laughs> you know, like someone was like, you should put limestone in the boxes. And I'm like, there's so many moving parts to our business model. I can't imagine. Yeah, putting you're, limestone water you're in like, yeah, I'll, I'll get on that. <laughs> yeah. Can we get a new box? <laughs> Can we get... We gotta get the we gotta get that limestone you in there. Gotta fit the like, limestone okay. water in here. No, Maybe but down the road. I, I gotta uh, say, but, yeah. So this this reminds me a lot of uh, there's a, a distillery and it was a pre prohibition distillery that um, was acquired a number of years ago, a little I think a little over a decade, and it went re- into production again called Chicken Cock Whiskey, and they do a beer barrel select that. I don't think they do it anymore, but it, this, like this reminds me, it's a, it's like a, a more spice, not spice E, but, but spice version of like, it just reminds me of a little bit of that, that doughy, almost a, like a, a little bit hoppy, like sweet beer wart type of flavor to it kind of towards the end. It's like that dry, type of note that goes to it now you get you still do get a lot of that that bourbon or that yeah i mean that whiskey note on the front that bourbon note you get a little bit of the you know the traditional like deep caramel not so much vanilla on this one but this one's a lot more earthy but it, it reminds me that's why i said beer barrels yeah, it, it just, yeah exactly almost like that that herbal medicinal note to it which is like indicative of more classic whiskeys but you it, 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 I mean, it, it like literally my brain went, you know, it, it, I tasted this and I immediately thought of that beer barrel select. So one of the things that's hard is that sometimes um, we'll go through it and we'll all cover what our tasting notes are. And then we go and we look at what the company says the tasting notes are and some of them match up and some of them don't. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> so what we do is because we're not trying to, misassociate what a brand's doing is we reach out to the brand and we say, these are the notes that we're getting. And these are the notes that you say, do you want us to use some of ours or do you want us to just use theirs? And so some of them want to just use theirs. Some of them want, Oh, Hey, put that one in there. I think that is right. Um, or someone. So this one, for instance, uh, so this is a 61% uh, malted rye, 39% corn. Um, So it does have that rye note. Okay, yeah, because that's the, the first thing I said is I was like, I get rye on this. Yeah, you're getting that rye. It's it's 127 proof, um, so it's you know it's it's a high heat level, and oh, you kind of I smoother. think it's mellow because you you really eased into it, you know, by by ramping up to this sample D. Someone that starts with sample D, I think, is going to be like, whoa, it's going to kind of burn their taste buds a little bit. Um, so yeah, the the aroma notes that the company state is that there's some there's some apple and apricot, there's some fruit, some chocolate, some cinnamon, and floral and herbal. Their tasting notes are dark fruits, um, mm. earthy as you stated, eucalyptus, leather, mint, and oak. Um, and their finish that. is um, a strong, sweet, woody finish with pine and red fruits and tobacco. Um, and tobacco is one of the ones that I kind of picked up on. And you know, sometimes that leather, you know, when I'm smelling that finished leather um i can yeah. sometimes pick up on that i think 291 is just you know if anyone listening hasn't tried them out um i i think they're just in, in within the craft industry they're doing just amazing 
uh, products, and we're big fans of theirs. Um, you know, I don't know if they're going to end up in our lineup in the future, but um, we are talking to them regularly and trying to figure out a way to uh, get something interesting because we're, we're just fans of everything that they're doing. Um, so, so overall in the lineup, um, did, did you feel like there were, were there any that you didn't like? No, no, I, I enjoyed them all. It's at this point, you know, at this point, it's pretty hard for me to, well, no, that's not true. It's very easy for me to find a whiskey. I don't like, but if it's been pre-screened, by <laughs> some, if it's been pre-screened by another panel to be good to great, then, you know, I, I I'd imagine there's, there, you're not just being like, wow, I hope those are good. <laughs> I mean, once again, we're going back to like, we want everyone to like all of them and to love a couple of them, you know? I mean, what was your favorite out of those four? Um, You know, I, I've got to say, I, I really did enjoy four a lot. It, it reminded me of that beer barrel finish, like I said, and it's, uh, you know, there's just a, it's a different flavor profile that doesn't go too far off the mark from your core classic whiskey notes, but it adds a bit of depth and dimension. And then the fact that it drinks under its proof i i am i liked that a lot i liked uh c c was really good too honestly i liked them all but if i had to pick one out i'd, I'd probably pick the 291 yeah and it's 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 interesting every time you know i've i've uh, done those with different people and friends everybody has a different favorite and um i i i actually look at them like i they're all favorites for different reasons um uh, when we kind of go through the lineup because what you'll notice as you go through them, and if you even change the order the next time you go through them, it creates even a more subtle experience um, in just noticing the difference from going from one to another. So we, we kind of tell people after you go A through D, try the different samples and see how one then plays off the other one and yeah. see what happens um, when you're trying these different uh, whiskeys in different orders. Awesome. So how can people sign up to get your upcoming release? So, um, so you go to blindbarrels.com and <clears throat> we currently are only a subscription model. Mm-hmm. Um, eventually we will be able to have one-off gift purchases, um, probably by late March. Um, so it's seasonal quarterly. So that means mid March, mid June, mid September, mid December. So it's not like you order it today. It's going to come tomorrow. Um, our one-off boxes go out at the same time, every time. And um, we don't have the luxury of sitting on a bunch of samples like some of these other um, competitors that they can just send samples out at fulfillment partners at any given point. This lineup will never happen again. Um, These brands will probably never be in our lineup again. They might in another capacity with a different expression. Uh, But what's cool about it is, and we're having friends in different states and family and coworker, um, coworkers that it's a great way for everyone to check in every three months over some whiskey. Um, and, yeah. and, you know, people start talking, people start drinking and it's, and it's just a great way to check in. So that was a big reason why we also made it seasonal. Um, so, you know, quarterly it's, it's, it's seventy four ninety nine, and that includes the price of shipping. One of the things that I think was a turnoff for me in every club that, uh, I looked at when we were looking at competitors was you, you hit that checkout box and then all of a sudden, <laughs> Oh, it's $20 more. Yeah. yeah. Well, cause shipping alcohol is expensive. Yes. And so I didn't want people to go, oh, it's only this. And then they get there and they go, uh. So we didn't want to create that. So we built the shipping into the model. The annual, if you pay for four quarters in advance, is $249. So you're basically paying $62.50 per quarter. Um, and someone might say, well, okay, well, uh, what makes this price worth that? I mean, I think when you see the box and the experience, and it's really the curation. These are samples that you can't try. Um, every single lineup that we have, sorted out um we have our our first really three and a half lineups figured out i mean there's some amazing surprises in there um some brands i mean you you've heard of all have you heard of all these brands yeah yeah well actually no i hadn't heard of uh, middle west yeah middle west i'll tell you middle west dude i'm just go if you see a bottle of it anywhere i mean what's interesting about these bottles is 291 is more accessible this particular bottle is really hard to get um Kings County, if you just go try to buy Kings County online, it's not that easy. Um, you know, you, you, even Black Button, um, Middle West, like if you go try to just look up and say, okay, let me see who in my area has it. There's probably not anybody in your area that has it, even a total wine. Um, and sometimes you'll be able to get it shipped to you, but then by the time it gets to you, it ends up being really pricey. Yeah. Um, so we wanted to have that, not just that access to try things, but then if you like a bottle and you want to order it, uh, we'll be able to get it to you. And some of our bottles might be limited. 
Um, you know, I know our first one, there's um, not a lot of this particular whiskey in, in one of our first lineups available. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I have a feeling that um, this particular, this one, I can't say what it is, but this guy, he was going to use it in a blend. And oh, uh, no. one of, one of, yeah, well, he was going to create it in a blend and one of uh, the distributors was by tasting. He's like, what are you doing with this? And he's like, oh, I'm going to blend it. He's like, no, <laughs> what are you doing? And he just entered it into two blind tasting competitions with massive, uh, um, you know, like 300 brands. They didn't just get gold or platinum. They got best in show in two different blind tastings. And it's a bottle that you literally can't get in any store. Um, and it won't be in stores probably until later this year. Well, I'm, um, so I'm it's, excited for that. It's a diamond in the rough that um, we, we, we we're trying to find some of them in every single lineup. And so far, we've been very lucky. Um, but that first one that uh, the first now I will say if someone orders after March 12th, um, they won't be able to get a box until June. Um, so there is a cutoff date that happens at some point where we have to be able to get our boxes and fill and get them shipped out to people. So if someone orders after that date, they're not gonna be able to get that. So if, if they end up ordering after March or they hear this podcast later, I mean, these boxes are going to be out in time for father's day. So what a great gift to just, uh, get in the hands of uh, your dad, you get one and you get to sip whiskey with your dad every, every few months. Awesome. You know? Well, Bobby, thank you for coming on to the podcast and sharing this with me. This was a really cool experience. I love the focus on craft. I'm a big, big believer that, you know, a lot of these craft distilleries are, are paving the way. They've got some really amazing things coming out. They're just not given the opportunity to, to come to the limelight as much as other larger distilleries. And that's unfortunate. Um, but this is a great way for people to be able to experience those um, and really potentially find new favorites. So uh, thank you for coming on. And, and uh, I assume people can follow you all on social media. Yeah, we're at, we're at blind barrels. Uh, yeah. So we got all those trademarks locked up too. Um, but yeah, we can get across all the social platforms and yeah, thank you for having me on. Thank you for going for the experience. I, I love that you were able to, you're the first one that literally pulled out the, the actual, um, uh, you know, distillery brand right off the bat. That was amazing. You started out strong. And then, uh, but I mean, just to be able to name one of them is amazing. So super impressive. Uh, Love being on the show and love talking whiskey with you and happy to come back anytime.